Welcome to Daily Office Devotions. I'm Reggie Kidd joining you from inside the Cathedral Church of St. Luke in Orlando, Florida. Thanks for joining me on this Thursday following Trinity Sunday. Given where Easter falls this year, our readings should have us in proper six of the daily lectionary in the Book of Common Prayer. But my teaching schedule with my friends at the Robert E. Weber Institute for Worship Studies has caused me to, to scramble things a bit. This week, we are contemplating passages from proper four. I want to give some attention to the early chapters of the book of Ecclesiastes and of Paul's letter to the Galatians. Thanks for your flexibility. Next week, we will be back on track with readings from the daily lectionaries, proper seven. Death and life under the sun. For Ecclesiastes, the most obvious dead end is death itself. In the face of death, according to the writer, the best that human observation can offer, the best that we who live under the sun can surmise is, who knows whether the human spirit goes upwards and the spirit of animals goes downwards to the earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 21. If animal existence is all there is, you cope in resignation, just going about your business, oblivious to any larger question. And perhaps you raise a glass to the dead or the not yet born for having to lay eyes on a world where the oppressors have power and the oppressed have only tears. Who knows, asks Ecclesiastes, if there's any point at all to life under the sun. Who knows indeed, responds the Catholic philosopher Peter Craft. Here under the sun, no one, unless there should appear here under the sun, a man who came from beyond the sun, beyond the horizon of death's night, unless we saw the rising sun, S-O-N. But Solomon had not yet seen that man, Craved in Three Philosophies of Life, page 47. The rest of the Bible, observes Craved, provides answers to questions that the book of Ecclesiastes raises. Who knows? What's the point? Because the rest of the Bible has seen the man who came from beyond the sun. Matthew has seen the man from beyond the sun. Thus, in our reading today, Matthew describes the day the man from beyond the sun multiplies loaves and fishes to feed people with physical hunger, prefiguring a sacred sustenance for souls. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them. Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. Jesus uses the same actions here that he will use at the Last Supper. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 recounts, While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Matthew wants us to know that these physical provisions are gifts in promise of spiritual nourishment for bearers of the eternal divine image. We are not soulless animals. Paul, too, has seen the man from beyond the sun, the man who shook off the curse of death, who reversed death itself. That is why in yesterday's reading in Galatians, Paul speaks of being crucified with Christ. He declares, it is no longer I who live, meaning, to paraphrase Ecclesiastes, I no longer live under the sun, that is, with futility and without purpose. Paul continues, It is Christ who lives in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And so, in today's passage from Galatians, Paul rejoices because Jesus' seemingly meaningless death, which was both like and unlike so many other seemingly meaningless deaths before and after his, becomes promise and hope and purpose. 
It is God's blessing for Gentiles as well as for Jews, Galatians chapter 4, verse 3, which is to say it is for everybody who will believe, for all who refuse to let their horizons be defined by what is observable under the sun, and who say instead, yes, to the rising sun, S-O-N. I pray you say yes to Jesus today. Be blessed this day.